Hi everyone, and welcome to class. Today what we're going to talk about is bows and the hair on the bow. We're not going to talk about rehair today, but we're going to talk about how to prevent a rehair. The most common reason why bow hair stretches out too long is because we leave it too tight. But it's not that simple. Bow hair actually stretches a lot, and it will stretch for two different reasons. One is because it's been left under tension too long. And we all know it, if we don't loosen the hair on the bow, the hair is going to stretch out and end up being really saggy on the bow. But the other reason is because of weather. Bow hair will actually expand and contract due to moisture in the air. And it expands and contracts a lot more than I ever thought it did. I remember when I was new into this and had, a bow, had bows coming in at a certain time of year that everything was just loose. All of the hair was just hanging way down on the bow. And I couldn't figure out why. So I started calling a bunch of repair technicians and saying, hey, why is this happening? What's going on here? And they also, the very first question every single one of them asked was, well, what's happened to the weather? Has the humidity gone up? And I said, well, yeah, it can't be that much. You wouldn't believe how much these things are down. And finally, one technician said, hey, would you do me a favor? Take a bow in front of you and split that bow in half. So if we've got the full length of the bow here, knowing that the bow can actually expand, or the hair can expand 20%. He says, take that bow and cut it in half. He says, so now this is 50% of the bow hair. He says, now cut that in half again. So this is 25% of the bow hair. And he says, now take 5%-ish off of that, which is probably more. So that much distance is how much the bow hair can actually expand and contract just because of moisture. And that's a lot of distance for that to move. That's a lot of expansion and contraction because the frog can't take that up. The frog is only gonna move about this much maximum. And that's what that's two to three percent. Now let's let's call it five. Let's call it five percent of that total distance of that twenty of that twenty percent there that's gonna be able to move. It is nowhere near enough to control the expansion of the hair. So what happens here? When the hair gets wet, when the humidity in your air goes up, so a storm blows through. I'm in the desert, we're always dry. But when a storm blows through, that humidity in the air goes up. And for us, it comes from 6% humidity all the way up to 80% humidity when a storm blows through. In a lot of places in the country, it's 60% or higher always, but when that storm blows through, it'll jump into that 80 to 100% humidity. And when that happens, this hair is taking up that moisture and expanding. And when it expands, it's going to get longer, which means that bow, is going to, that bow hair is going to droop down. And no matter what you do to the frog, you can't get it tight enough. So what do you do? Well, you've got two options, really. The first one, and probably the best one, is wait. It's that simple. Just wait. Wait until that storm blows out and the air starts drying out, and you'll notice that that hair comes back. Now, right now, I can tell people are going, nah, I don't believe it. All right, think about this. How many times have you ever opened up your case and pulled your bow out and looked at the bow and went, huh, it's already tight. Oh, boy, I must not have... Loosen that last night. You did loosen it. I know you went in there, you did your normal one, two, three. It's the same thing you've always done. You stuck it back in the case. But overnight, what happened when you loosened that hair, the humidity dried out and the hair shrunk. And when it shrunk up, it puts tension back on the bow, which means that hair is now under tension again. And so you did it, but the weather changed. Or how many times have you pulled it out and done the opposite? You go to your normal one, two, three. Huh, that's not enough. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And we find, all right, there we go. Now I've got enough tension on it going. What's happening there is that humidity is changing and the bow hair length is changing. We don't really think about it. We just make the modifications at the screw and we move on with life. But it really does affect it. And when you get a huge uh, humidity change, that can affect a lot of difference. So the best thing you can do is wait it out and let it go. The second thing you should probably do is have a second bow in your case for this, for this option. So when you have that really high humidity, have a spare bow rehaired and put the hair on there fairly tight for that, knowing that it's going to be for that purpose. So that way when we get that humidity come in, it's there. So what you do then is you simply take the um, screw clear out of the, let's show you here. So what you do then is you simply unscrew the screw as far as you can so it actually comes loose and then you can actually drop the frog down. There we go. 
drop the frog down completely so that hair is never going to get tight in it. So that's one option. The other option is you can just keep it as loose as possible so there's as much hair loose as possible. That way you are, we're not running the risk of this being under tension when the humidity is dry. So that's really what happens is our bow hair will stretch out mostly because we tighten the bow when it was wet, that dry, storm dries out, or the storm leaves and the air dries out and our hair shrinks back up. And so all of a sudden we think the bow is under tension again and we think we just forgot to, we didn't. But when that hair is under tension for so long, then the second type of stretching happens, which is tension stretch. And when that tension's there and it starts to stretch out, then I'm sorry, there's nothing you can do. That hair is just longer at that point. Uh, it won't expand back or won't retract back after the, it dries out more. It's just stretched and you need to rehair. So those are really the two reasons why bow hair stretches and why you'll need to rehair before you've actually run. Look out. And that's why this is just a cheap student level bow so I can whack it around on things. Um, that's why we sometimes need to rehair before we've actually run out of hair at the frog and broken enough pieces is because the hair has been stretched out either through humidity or through leaving it under tension. You guys, I hope that helps awareness just a little bit. And what we need to do with our students is teach them this and show them, look, bow hair expands and contracts. You have to loosen this bow. Maybe not that much where, the where it falls out, but you have to loosen that screw. And sometimes that's three turns. Oh, let's show you that. So sometimes we go one, two, three, right? Well, you remember that if that's 50, that's 25, that's 20%. The three turns that we do on our screw, wrong camera, still wrong camera. The three turns we do on the screw are going to be one, two, three threads. That's it. So we're moving that bow, that frog, between my thumbs there. That's all the more, that's three threads. That's one, two, three full turns. We're only moving it that far. So getting the students in the habit of moving this frog a lot, where I can actually, if the hair's under tension here, so you can see that bow's under tension there, if I can get that frog to move forward where the hair actually slacks out like that, that's where I really want to teach my students where to put that frog when we're putting the instrument back in the case. That way I know I've got as much movement as possible in the expansion contraction from humidity on the boat. So not just three turns, but loose hair put back in the case. That's the best way we can protect our bows and, ex and extend our, our rehair life. You guys, if you have any questions, we're going to go to the live session next. Uh, we're going to shut this portion off for YouTube. Uh, so guys, if you want to come join us for the live session where the next thing we're going to do is go answer as many questions as people have that are joining us here live uh, for the session. If you want to do that, go to repairmasterclass.com, scroll down on the homepage to Live Tech Tip Tuesdays, and just register. You'll get the link and all that to, be, to join us on this Zoom call. Um, and right now, we'll go answer all the questions that people have up in the comments and chats. So I hope to see you guys next week. Cheers.